We are looking at everything, but for the 3D logistics, we have one big topic. This is the emergency helicopter association. All the things around drones are very, very interesting because not having a pilot every time for mm -hmm. bringing goods from one to another station and also the medical drone to, to bring hearts and so on to hospitals or so on. This is, this is very interesting. And there we are cooperating with the Swiss Association and with the Netherlands associations. We had a first trial to bring the medical goods faster and better to the needed point. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About Tech, your podcast on venture capital and private equity brought to you by Venioneer Capital, the entrepreneurial partners. Today, my guest is Susanne Tischmann, Chief Information Officer of the Austrian Automobile Association, ÖAMTC. Great to have you, Susanne. Hi, and thanks for having me. It's amazing to have someone from such, such a big institution, right? working in technology here in our podcast. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you become a, a chief technology officer? Such a big position. I'm sure there was a long journey and somewhere it started with the interest, with the nudge to technology. Yes, I'm from the west uh, of Lower Austria. It's a very rural situation and my father was a uh, a banking, uh, local banking chief, and my mother was a housewife. Um, but I learned early when I was 10 or 11 um, that there is something out there with computers. And when I got the, the possibility, I got in the, in the free courses for informatics, and we did the first programming for how, how you can make a, a lot of Uh, uh, winning and how are these changes? This these are uh, very famous first programs we did, and then I was very interested. I had two main interests uh, in school. The one was architecture, and the other one was um, technology or IT. Um, but as the architecture was not not so mine, I then. Started studying technical mathematics because mathe was also one uh, one thing I did very um, I, I was very fast and it was very um, very good for me to work with uh, with figures and um, and I like math in school very much. <clears throat> But um, I thought it would be a good idea to have a broader. Uh, a broader sight on, on on my own involvement, and then started also to to study um, economic economics in IT. So uh, in Austria, it's called Wirtschaftsinformatik, um, and this was the one I I really enjoyed because we did we did economics and we did IT, but we are. We were more than a half uh, girls in, in our studying, and it was very interesting. And when, um, when I did the study, I first came to the MTC mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a situation to have work besides my studying, to have money. Mm -hmm. And there I started in summer with, uh, with call center and did, did the calls. Um, and after the summer, I was asked to, to stay and to do the, some work which were needed uh, for computers. And the first thing I did was um, that I made the first geolocation system for the MTC for the roadside assistance. So every, every street in Vienna, I did in the geo positioning so that the, the, the dispatching for the, for the petrol guys uh, can be more optimized than uh, in before where we had paperwork uh, for each and every uh, roadside assistance. And I assume this was before Google Maps yes. and Waze. This, and, was, this and was in years when the one was uh, in the front of the year number. Okay. So 1994, I started in OMTC and this was the first year, yes. It's incredible. So, so you, you, you always um, developed future technologies. 
over the course of, uh, of your work, what kind of innovations have you implemented in, in the automobile club? I was asked 1997 to, to stay at MTC and do the first project work. It was really a, a big project to centralize all the emergency calls uh, to four locations, having a new software, a new logic, new telephone, um, and there was a, a project guy and... Two years later, I could step into the whole um, into the whole organization and got the chance to take over the whole uh, emergency centers in Austria. There, within the software, the seven and twenty-four uh, situation uh, for the software, um, and this was the first innovation we tried to to tell our uh, customers on telephone how long they have to wait until the petrol guy will come. And so we tried to find an, an IT solution, it was back 2002, um, and find an algorithm for this uh, traveling salesman problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say it was, it was a fuck up because my own husband was a petrol guy who was really fast. And every day when he was, uh, he has his slot, the waiting time was too high. Mm -hmm. And at the days he, when he was not in slot, the waiting times were, were too less. And we have to realize that we didn't have the technology, we didn't have an algorithm, um, and we had no chance to, to improve this on, on this situation mm. uh, 22 years ago. When we when we stepped in again about uh, 2010, there were, there was a little bit more chance, but also the situation not uh, that there is no algorithm. There mm -hmm. is no algorithm today as well. But what we what we learned in between, we have now the technology. We have the technology. We have compute power, so mm -hmm. we don't need one algorithm. Mm -hmm. This was uh, this was the restrictions in the in the 2000 years. That, uh, that we didn't have compute power. So mm -hmm. um, this was the very big change from, let's say, 2015 to 2020, when, when cloud has begun to start, that there are real big amounts of compute power where you can lend something. So mm -hmm. you can lend 10 minutes in the cloud and, and you have a... You have a first idea if your machine algorithm will work for for mm -hmm. for saying the waiting times or not, and mm -hmm. and that is the technological game changer, that the compute power is now available and also for small amount of money available. For all of you that have never heard of the traveling salesman pr uh, problem, please Google it. It's a mathematical problem to optimize the route of salesmen originally. That's why the name is, but this is also for the the uh, the service employees, the, the petrols coming to yeah. save you when you when your car is dead on the streets, right? And you need to optimize this so that everybody waits the lowest time needed, right? And yeah. to optimize that, that's a global problem, right? You're benchmarking yeah. um, with several other organizations around the world. Yeah. Um, is this something where you see that some countries are doing better than others, or is this a constant development that you jointly do as automobile clubs globally? Yeah, it's 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 more the the jointly involvement, and um, we have uh, within the FIA, which is not only for uh, racing or Formula One, but also for automobile clubs all around the world, and uh, coming together. We, we do a really um, intensive uh, exchange every year uh, and everybody tells us who, where is he and uh, what is his uh, involvement. And we are also exchanging uh, technology and also exchanging know-how. Um, and, and that's more a, a common topic where we all work on. Um, and, and as we are the helpers, we do not challenge as, Hey, you are the first and you are the second. Right. Uh, but every, every, everybody has ideas and everybody has, um, uh, is open to exchange these these topics. But, uh, one funny story we exchanged a lot with the, with the Canadian club, um, back in 
2019 and we thought, hey, there is a logic which is very interesting for us uh, because they improved the waiting time, the, the, the common waiting time from 42 to 38. Uh, so this is uh, this is a percentage where we thought, hey, this is fine, and had a had a detailed look uh, until we found out that the Canadians are talking about 42 hours, and we are talking about 42 minutes until the battle man will come. So this is a whole other logic because when I have time 42 hours, then uh, the logic was that they are sending patrol guys in the areas where they know that in between the next day something will happen. Mm -hmm. So there is forecast. Mm -hmm. But within 42 minutes, you don't have the chance to, to move the petrol guys in that way that it helps. Right. So, but yeah. we need to make the remark that Canada is not slow, right? No, it's just, it's a, it's just this a is geographical a, circumstances. Yes, this is that, yeah. that we found out that this is not in the in the cities, but it's, 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 um, On it's the countryside. in the countryside. And... The, this is more that they um, that is um, another another thinking point and another life. So in in the cities, it's a, it's a whole different situation also for them. Uh, but when you start talking, uh, then there is sometimes a right. misunderstanding yeah. only when it comes up to one word or not. For me, being a nature lover. Um you know, Canada is uh, is wonderful, but there is a lot of land yeah. with not so many people in some in some areas. Um, it's great to explore. I highly recommend. Um, you re you recommended um, to to look into FIA as an organization that does not only Formula One but also these automobile clubs, etc. So with this benchmarking and exchanges and the innovation that is driving, I assume there is a lot of touch points with the big tech giants, you know, the cloud providers, um, but you do also work with uh, startups, scale-ups, technology companies locally. Um, where's the gate? How, they, how can they approach you? How would they work with you? Um, so there are uh, different possibilities uh, for MTC. This is one, the direct contact for sure, to, to see if there uh, are co common ideas which, which, are, uh, which are fitting in our roadmap or in our strategy. Um, uh, this is the one where I, I can be contacted for technology directly. Um, and the second one is we have also venturing. So we, we founded a venture um, back in 2024. It's called 120 Ventures, um, where new ideas are brought in most common, actually, there is not so the topic of roadside assistance or something, but it's a little bit different because they they are now having the focus around care, healthcare, mm -hmm. because care is a is a real big thing and mm -hmm. it will be bigger and bigger as we are all getting older. Right, and there are a heck of ideas and everybody who has ideas in this direction 120 ventures would be a, a good starting point to to come in contact to us um, because we are trying to find good ideas and then evolve them um, up to an outscaling. A good friend of mine always says, he's from Japan, he always says, solving the social problem is the biggest narrative that they have in their corporate venture fund. Yeah. So it's also about the aging society, it's yeah. about healthcare services and how to keep things running, right? When the majority of the population is above a certain age, right? And yeah. the working population is less so you have less people serving a bigger group yeah. of people. Um, it's very interesting that you go into this service area. What kind of topics would that be that uh, that you would look at if somebody would apply? So logistics. Um, the, or lo logistics uh, is is a topic for us nowadays. Uh, all all the service bots. Uh, service agent bots. Mm -hmm. This is every time interesting for us as we do live for our services and uh, uh, every uh, every in every situation we we are eager to learn new things to to that our our service people has a better um, uh, a better possibility to bring their services because this is the main topic on our IT not so more the disruption that we don't need our service guys but how mm -hmm. can we make them more efficient 
mm-hmm. how we can help them, um, how we can uh, improve all our service processes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the topic within the MTC. Yes. So usually startups would you know um, ask family and friends, business angels, venture capital. Now you have a venture capital fund with 120 ventures, and as angels, right? Um, very very famous in Austria, the UMTC are called the Yellow Angels. So you might want to add Yellow Angels to the business angels as one opportunity to partner and exchange ideas. Um, Looking a bit, little bit into the future, there's global trends um, all around this topic of drones, right? So 3D mobility, 3D logistics. Um, some futurists are talking about a whole different network of travel and how consumer goods or even industrial goods will be delivered soon. How far is this already a reality and how much have, uh, do you have an eye on 3D mobility, 3D logistics? We are looking at everything, uh, everything a little bit. But uh, for the 3D logistics, we, we have one, uh, one big topic which we are also very interested in because uh, in our Christophorus, uh, mm-hmm. uh, this is uh, the emergency helicopter uh, association. Um, all, all the things around drones are very, very interesting because uh, not having every time uh, a pilot for mm-hmm. bringing goods from one to another station um, and and also the, the, the medical drone to, to bring um, the hearts and so on uh, to to hospital or so on this is this is very interesting and there we have uh, joint ventures not 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 really a joint venture but we we are cooperating with the Swiss association and with the Netherlands associations and we had we had a first trial um, that that a medical drone is is done from an operator in in Switzerland but the drone flew in in Austria mm-hmm. so these were uh, also the first trials and how we can how we can optimize these uh, these ways uh, to 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 bring uh, the medical goods uh, faster and better to the to the needed uh, point. There's obviously flight regulations that are super strict, right? On the other hand, the world leading software provider for flight management, Frequentis, is an Austrian company. Um, do you discuss the regulatory topics with the regulatory bodies and work with leading companies like Frequentis uh, also on these? Yes, um, our our we are we are called a critical infrastructure on the topic of of the helicopters, and yes, there we are very uh, um, very near at at the Austrian laws, and uh, as we do it for our customers regarding. Uh, regarding the cars and the car data, we also try to make lobbying and changes in the in the regulation on 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 that topic, and we are very near. Uh, with Frequentis, we have uh, we have also contacts, but uh, on on that topic not so uh, at the drones. But there we have a new uh, um, a proof of concept, also with communication with customers. Mm. But um, the colleagues um, uh, from the from the helicopters um, having also every time an open eye and an ear what what's new on it and and making exchange on that topic. Cool. So if you are working on a game changer in mobility um, or a game changer in elderly care, healthcare. Um, Susanne Tischmann right, would be very, very glad to speak with you and learn more. Um, I'm sure also the team of 120 Ventures. Yes. Um, it was very interesting to learn from you how active and how innovative the Austrian Automobile Association, ÖMTC, is. And in my humble opinion, I feel you're very innovative and a little bit setting the benchmark for the rest of the world, even though you said everybody's doing a little bit of the same. Um, but this might be a little bit of my local pride. Forgive me. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing to have you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Tune in for the next episode and take care. Bye bye.